Hi everyone, it's Robin Sterling. Thanks for stopping by my channel where we ask the question, what's that all about? This is my first full length episode. So if you enjoy it afterwards, would you kindly like subscribe and perhaps share also? I'd love to hear your feedback. So I'm gonna dive right in and tell you a little bit about a man named Dr. William Bates. He's known for a few significant things, but I'm gonna start right off at the beginning. Um, in 1902, he was living in New York with his third wife, and he was known to be a very successful ophthalmologist, eye doctor, and he was handsome, and he was revered by other doctors and actually asked even to assist with unusual cases in some instances. So he was doing rather well, and he was financially well off. So on August 30th, while his wife was away visiting her mom, Dr. Bates received a call from an old student of his asking for his assistance on a few strange cases that he had and he was looking for his help. And of course, you know, as usual, Dr. Bates accepted and he left a note for his wife. Um, the note he left her was very confusing at first for her um, and then somewhat concerning. So it starts and, and I'll, I'll give you some of the note, but it's important to note here that, you know, th this is a 1902. So um, notes were left a lot. So it like immediate concern wasn't part of the problem. It was how he acted was part of the problem. So the note that he left her read in part, I was called out of town for some major operations and I'm glad to get so much money for it all. And then he, his, he closed with, write later, write details later. So his wife, not really understanding why he would be concerned about the money portion of it, since they were very well off, you know, not having any money problems. So she didn't think much of it. She sort of passed it off and, and said, well, you know, I think that, you know, he's, he's going to write and I'll just hear from him and he'll tell me what's going on. He never wrote. She never heard from him, and he just disappeared. Now, Dr. William Bates was a member of the Freemasons. So what his wife did was she called upon them, because they are far-reaching. They have networks, lodges, you know, across the country and across the pond. So uh, she, you know, asked them to help locate her husband, and they were all more than happy to help because, you know, it's a fellow member, and he was an upstanding citizen and whatnot. So they got right at it, and six weeks later, he was found in London. So here's where the story gets a little convoluted. So it's when Mrs. Bates got word of his um, reemergence or reappearance, um, she was told, quote, he was not in a good way. He was found at a, a London hospital named the Charing Cross Hospital. Now, when she arrived, actually, I should say the story that she got conflicted somewhat with another version of this that I did in my research that I found. Um, he was found to be working at this hospital when he was actually located. So initially he had been a patient and that's the common denominator. But when she arrived, he was working there. So he hadn't forgotten any of his medical training or um, anything like that. So there was really no cause for too much alarm. But when she showed up at the hospital, he claimed he had no idea who she was and never didn't recognize her for anything. And she was, I mean, she was devastated because she loved him so. And, um, you know, she convinced him somehow to join her back at the Savoy Hotel where she was staying. And, you know, kind of reluctantly he agreed and she just thought that if they spent more time together, right, that they would eventually um, spark some memories. And he did actually, for the first couple of days, he, he seemed to be remembering them. Like he remembered boarding um, a, a boat and shipping off to London. He remembered working on um, surgeries on a patient that had uh, a brain abscess. So he remembered certain details. And then two days later, he would leave the Savoy. And that would be the last time his wife ever saw him. And this poor thing 
for the rest of her days, which ended in 1907, she searched for him and her heart was broken. She was the story is that she died with a picture of him. She was clutching it to her chest when she passed away. So it's just, it's so tragic. And he just, that was the second disappearance. He walked away from everything again, no explanation this time. No, no, he just vanished. Now, fast forward three years, and an old colleague of uh, Dr. Bates, his name was J.E. Kelly, Dr. J.E. Kelly, he happened to be going through Grand Forks, North Dakota. Random, very. And I don't really believe in coincidences, so this is sort of like, I think, the universe (laughs) stepping in. He was traveling there for business and he happened to look, because he was an ophthalmologist, he happened to look through the window of an ophthalmology office that was in town only to see Dr. William Bates reappearing yet again in this town. And he went in, he talked to him and he convinced him to come back to New York with him. He says, this isn't where your life is. And he told him about his wife passing and he didn't really have any reaction to it because he just, he claimed he still didn't remember her or his life before his first disappearance. It's just, it's so strange. But anyway, he did convince him to go back with him. And they actually, when he got back, they actually ended up um, opening a very successful practice together. And that is when Dr. Bates discovered and developed the Bates method. I'm not sure if you've heard of it. I had heard vaguely of something like that, probably because I wear glasses, (laughs) but, um, it's something, you know, it's a, it's an alternative. mm, I don't want to use the word medicine because no medicine's really used, but, um, in a nutshell, He wanted to teach people simple ways to relax their eyes and their minds and teach vision rehabilitation practices and habits, therefore improving their vision naturally. Now, the reason why this is not accepted widely in the mainstream medicine um, realm is because there's no evidence that this actually works. There's nothing scientific or, you know, medically proven that his methods work. But <laughs> I looked a little bit deeper into um, the the method as it stands today. Now, there was a very, then and now, there's a very popular um, method called palming, okay? Now, I'm going to take my glasses off for this, but so it's, <laughs> I did this experiment for research purposes, but this method is called palming. I'm not sure if you've heard of it. I initially thought it was filthy, but it's not. It's supposedly legitimate, you know, for the Bates method as part of that. So what you're supposed to do is put your your palms over your eyes like this and black, basically you shut your eyes, you black out everything, right? And that's for five or 10 minutes, you can do it longer. I did it for 10 minutes. I just felt like that would probably be enough to get some sort of a result. So I do it. And um, I should note, you know, in 1900s, people weren't staring at computer screens and, um, and, and phones for hours on end, right? So, you know, the fatigue that eyeballs have these days is a lot different than what they had back in, in the 1900s. So anyway, I take my hands off my, my eyes and for a moment, <laughs> for a moment, I could see, yes, they were so relaxed that I think for about a split second to two seconds, maybe max, it seemed like I could see better, right? Now, lightning strike, it's bad. I might, you know, I got to pick up my glasses and all that stuff. But um, the thing is, Medically speaking, what had happened was moisture had built up over my eyes, which is very healthy for your eyeballs, right? And then a flattening of the lens took place where my vision evened out. That's that's clinically, medically, scientifically what happens. Um, and it's very short-lived. It's not something that you should by any means. I mean, this is your eyesight you're talking about here, so... Um, you know, it's, I I don't want to say that I was ready to just toss my glasses off and and take to the roads because that wouldn't be safe for anyone. But 
The Bates Method today has had somewhat of a facelift. And it's called, <laughs> it's interesting, um, they have these these folks called natural vision educators. Now, they do not claim to be doctors, but um, they do teach the ways of natural vision correction or improvement. So it's, you know, <laughs> take it for what it's worth. Do your research. You may want to try the hands over the palms. It is kind of trippy. It was sort of fun to, to do that, but um, in no way was it for long-term health for your eyes. So keep that in mind too. Now I want to note, you know, Dr. Bates didn't just stop at the Bates method. He had a couple of other things in his life that took place that were pretty significant to note. Um, I'm going to try and pronounce this, the, the couple of words that I, I want to make sure I don't mangle them too badly so that you don't understand what they are. Okay. Um, Dr. Bates discovered the astringent and homeostatic, homeostatic properties of the substance produced by the adrenal glands and its medical function, especially during surgeries. Now, the substance was later commercialized as adrenaline. Now, that's a word I know we all know, but that's still a very significant advancement in medicine that he discovered. So, you know, he has one method that maybe is a little questionable, but then he comes back with, you know, this method, this proven, scientifically proven um, advancement, and that's, you know, sort of evens it out. <laughs> um, now, you'd think that that would be it for him, right? That that's like the last thing about his life that, you know, cherry on the top. No, there was something else that happened in his life that was um, very mysterious. He had, uh, like I said, been married three times. So he was the final thing, his wife, his third wife was the one he left and disappeared, reappeared and disappeared and reappeared. But in the meantime, he did have children and his first born, his oldest, his name was um, Charles Halsey Bates. And he ended up disappearing just like his father, except he never resurfaced. I cannot even explain how mysterious this is because I cannot find anything. I, I've tried turning over every rock. I, I've just everything. I've ripped the internet apart trying to find any information I can on this Charles um, Charles Bates, and nothing is there. So he went missing in August. Again, the August month uh, being a correlation in 1928, and that was that was the that was the end of that. I mean, when Dr. William Bates died. In July of 1931, he didn't even mention him in his will. So he, you know, just, he was kind of written off, um, which is just so odd, you know. But, I mean, there's no doubt about it that he had, William Bates had a, um, Dr. William Bates had a very, you know, eventful, successful, tragic, you know, just downright strange life. But, you know, it does lead to the question, Right. What's that all about? It did. It's like a classic case of that. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. I mean, I had a lot of fun researching it, but I'd love to hear your feedback. So like, subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you again next Thursday. Same time, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard, 5 p.m. Mountain Time. And I hope everybody's staying happy and healthy out there. And stay weird. And um, take care. Thanks. Bye.